So as per one of your recommendations, we are going to be checking out Egyptian research discovered an ancient city underwater that no records of exist. So a bit of a sciencey one, I suppose. A bit of a bit of history here. See what that's like. Egypt is only the highlands of it. Another very fascinating aspect of this testimony is that the ancient Egyptian priests found multiple caches of books and documents which they then spirited away to the Library of Alexandria in Egypt. How do they know and this? And we are well. told that the burning of the Library of Alexandria was a false flag and the only thing they really burned was the census records and the Romans took all of the real books, all the ancient, ancient stuff cataloged by the Egyptians and hid away in where? The Vatican Library. The lost city of Heraclean, known to the ancient Egyptians as Thonis, was a submerged city near the mouth of the Nile River off the coast of modern-day Alexandria, Egypt. Its discovery in the early 2000s by underwater archaeologist Frank Godio and his team was a landmark event in archaeology. For centuries, Heraclean had been considered nothing more than a legend known. So here, here's something. I mean, I watch jug like this quite a lot. Um, <clears throat> and I don't know if you know about it, but there's a thing called the Eye of the Sahara in the African desert. And it basically, from space, it looks, it looks just like an eye. It's really weird. But it has three concentric circles. And there's a lot of uh atlantis hunters um that are fixated with this one location because it has i think apparently this thing is massive um and apparently it's where atlantis was and what they're saying is there was around 12 13 thousand years ago there's a, a gigantic biblical tidal wave that just basically swept through uh africa i just just took it off the face of the uh, of the planet um i mean I, I find it quite believable personally but one of the things was obviously atlantis was at the edge of the sea or in the sea or something like that and the water levels have dropped hugely over the last uh, th a few thousand or no, last ten thousand years and I, I i want to see what the water levels would look like back ten thousand years ago would you know because obviously this city is now flooded so they built this on the built this when it was on dry land and now it's underwater and there's another place in india where there's like all these temples uh like uh, cone shaped type temples um and you uh you see it maybe once every few years when the water's low enough uh, but otherwise it's completely submerged there's also one in the uk uh on the coast where a tidal wave came in like hundreds of uh, hundreds and hundreds of years ago tidal wave came and washed the city away uh, and there's still remnants of it under the water uh, there's a doggerland which is a huge landmass between the side of england and the side of france uh which was uh tropical well, it was possibly a tropical paradise but it was full of uh plants and vegetation and animals and those humans there and they found human uh hunting implements so all these things that have been above the land for thousands of years are now all submerged and things that uh you know so and i i find it fascinating that if the water level now has risen to submerge all these things, then how does the one with Atlantis and Sahara Eye work? Was it a case that the water level has receded for those over the thousands of years, but it hasn't risen, and, but the rest of the water has risen elsewhere? I don't know. It's, it's a bit of a weird one, really. Only through a few rare inscriptions and ancient texts, Heraclean served as a gateway to Egypt acting as one of the primary yeah there's one in the, uh, the mediterranean before the uh, city of the water in the mediterranean as well yeah this made it a bustling hub of commerce culture and religion the city was also a center for the worship of the god amun gerib the supreme god of the egyptians at the time 
Wow. One of the most significant religious events held in Heracleum was the annual Mysteries of Osiris ceremony, which celebrated the resurrection of the god Osiris. Artifacts and inscriptions found underwater suggest that this ceremony involved a procession from the temple of Amun Gereb in Heracleion to the temple of Amun in Canopus. The city's remains are located around six and a half kilometers off the coast, submerged under six 30 and a half to 45 kilometers. feet of water. The excavation of revealed water, a vast treasure trove of artifacts, statues, and architectural wonders that provide invaluable insights into ancient Egyptian civilization and its interactions with the Greek world. One of the most remarkable finds was the discovery of giant statues, some over five meters tall, beautifully carved and incredibly well preserved in the silty bottom of the bay. These statues represent a mix of Egyptian gods and goddesses, God, pharaohs the size of that. and Greek rulers, highlighting the cultural blend that characterized the city. Gold coins and weights made from bronze and stone were also discovered, shedding light on the city's trade and economic system. Among the most intriguing discoveries wow. were dozens of small limestone sarcophagi, believed to have been used for mummified animals brought as offerings to the gods. These, along with the remains of more than 64 ancient shipwrecks, tell the I'm story this of a city real, deeply the connected photos. with the divine, where commerce and religion were intertwined. An interesting comparison can be drawn between Heracleion and the ancient city I of Pompeii think that one Italy. Might be fake. Both cities were lost to natural disasters. Heracleion to rising waters and earthquakes. See, there we have it, rising waters. So the water level has risen. Um, it has, and it's, there's loads of places that are now under the water. So it just makes you think, I mean... How much else is under there that we don't know about and haven't found yet? Uh, I think they're saying that we know about five. What we've worked out, we know about five percent of what's under the water. Five percent. It's crazy, man. Compared to a volcanic eruption, we know more about the moon. Yeah, we know more about the moon. The centuries. The rediscovery of each has provided a snapshot of life in an ancient city, oh, I know offering that insights into the daily called. lives, cultures, and economies of the past. While Pompeii offers a glimpse into Pompeii, Roman life yeah. frozen in time by volcanic ash, Heracleion reveals its story through the preservation That's of pretty. artifacts beneath the sea. Both sites challenge our understanding of ancient civilizations, but the underwater preservation of Heracleion offers a unique perspective, particularly in the conservation of organic materials How and metals that would not have survived on land. Maybe the there's a big post and big ongoing excavation time bars saying, Welcome to Heracleum. challenge our perceptions of ancient history, providing evidence of the interconnectedness of ancient civilizations through trade, that religion, money, and culture. The artifacts and structures found beneath the waters of the Mediterranean are a testament to the city's significance in the ancient world, offering a vivid picture of its splendor and the daily lives of its inhabitants. Cleopatra's palace in Alexandria submerged beneath the waters of the eastern harbour near the modern city, is a site of immense archaeological and historical significance. This palace, part of the larger royal quarter of ancient Alexandria, was a centre of political power, cultural achievement and architectural grandeur during the reign of Cleopatra VII, the last active ruler of the Ptolemaic Kingdom of Egypt. The discovery of the palace's ruins underwater has captivated historians, archaeologists and the public alike, offering a unique glimpse into the life of one of history's most enigmatic figures and the period she lived in. The underwater explorations have revealed a wealth of artifacts, including statues, coins, jewellery and everyday objects that paint a vivid picture of life in Cleopatra's dog? Alexandria. Among the most significant finds are the magnificent statues. It was a big shaggy dog. Divers have uncovered yeah. numerous statues believed to have adorned the palace and the surrounding city. These include representations of Egyptian deities, I think they were used members for, of the Ptolemaic uh, making, dynasty, uh, flower. and possibly Cleopatra herself. Because they're all over the um, specific in individuals the world, can be challenging. The layout of the submerged buildings, including what are thought to be the palace's living quarters, ceremonial areas, and perhaps even the famous Pharos Lighthouse 
provides insight into the architectural styles and urban planning of the time. Is that the f Items uh, ranging uh, from pottery uh, uh, and glassware Alexandra. to coins and personal ornaments have been Can't found, be. illustrating both the domestic life within the palace and the broader economic and social systems of Alexandria. Alexandria under Cleopatra was a cosmopolitan hub of trade, culture and learning. The city housed the Great Library, oh, the beacon buildings. of knowledge Jesus. attracting scholars from across the ancient world. Cleopatra's reign marked the zenith of Alexandria's development as a center of Hellenistic culture, blending Egyptian traditions with Greek and Roman influences. The discovery of the palace underwater underscores Alexandria's importance as a You'd cultural rather have a real documentary capital. on this. An interesting yeah. parallel <clears throat> drawn between Cleopatra's palace in See, Alexandria I don't know, is this footage just general Roman footage they've found to Bayi go the with Bay the of theme? Naples. Or is it actual like footage of what he's Bayi discussing? was renowned for its opulent buildings, including villas, temples and baths, many of which belonged to the wealthiest and most powerful figures of the Roman world. Both sites were lost to the sea due to natural disasters. Bayi to volcanic activity and Alexandria to earthquakes and rising sea levels. The comparison right, okay. highlights how both cities were centers of luxury and political power, reflecting the wealth and architectural tastes of their respective civilizations. However, while Bayi offers insight into Roman elite leisure and architectural innovation, Cleopatra's palace in Alexandria provides a window into the last days of the Egyptian pharaohs and the Ptolemaic oh, dynasty's right, efforts head. to blend Egyptian and Hellenistic cultures. God, look at that the water. port of Alexandria, established by Alexander the Great in 331 BC, quickly became one of the world's most significant trade hubs and a beacon of cultural and intellectual achievement. Situated on the Mediterranean coast of Egypt, it connected trade routes from Europe, Asia and Africa, making it a melting pot of cultures, ideas and goods. The Enough port's boat, strategic yeah. and economic Warm significance boats was unknown in the ancient world, serving as the primary entry point for grain shipments from Egypt to Rome, a critical no, factor loads of in Rome's imperial stability. One of the port's most iconic landmarks was the Pharos Lighthouse, one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. I've never heard of the Pharos Lighthouse. Standing on the been? island of Pharos, it guided ships into the harbour with no, its towering no, light. No. Constructed yeah, okay. in the 3rd century Fair BC, enough. It exemplified ancient engineering marvels and symbolized Alexandria's prosperity. Although not directly part of the port, the Great Library of Alexandria was emblematic of the intellectual vibrancy that the city's wealth and connectivity facilitated. I mean, what it proof attracted do they have? scholars, scientists. Yeah, I mean, well, yeah. What, what, what proof do they have? I mean, this is something that happened thousands and thousands of years ago. So, what proof do they have that all the knowledge of. Uh, the great library was taken and put into the Vatican. You know, I mean, I know the Vatican is gigantic when it comes to its vaults and its storing of information. Like, but does it really have the information from there? Really? And at no point in time has it ever been revealed? You know? I... <sighs> and philosophers from across the ancient world. The royal quarters and palaces around the port included magnificent it's structures guesswork. and the Musaeon, yeah. a shrine of the Muses, which housed the famous library. These buildings reflected the city's status as a center of Hellenistic culture and power. Underwater archaeology has uncovered a wealth of artifacts from the port, including ancient shipwrecks, pottery, and everyday items, offering that insights guy's into ancient like maritime scales. practices and the diverse goods that flowed through the city. The port of Alexandria was crucial in the ancient economy, facilitating the trade of commodities oh, wow, such as beach. grain, papyrus, glass and precious metals. Its storied docks and warehouses bustled with merchants and goods from all corners of the Mediterranean and beyond, reflecting a highly organised trade network. The city's prosperity was closely tied to its port's efficiency and its ability to serve as a cultural and economic bridge between different worlds. Drawing a comparison, the port of Alexandria and the ancient Roman port of Ostia were both foundational to the economies of their respective empires. 
serving as vital nodes in the Mediterranean trade network. Ostia, at the mouth of the river Tiber, was the primary sea gateway for the Roman Empire, much like Alexandria was for Egypt. Each port was a focal point of economic activity and cultural exchange. But how do they know this? Reflecting the cosmopolitan nature of ancient Mediterranean life. Like, but, However, like, while really? Ostia primarily served Rome and was critical for importing grain to feed the capital's population. I can understand that they could find grain because they could find the vases that hold all the grain. And they could go, all right, there's a number of shipwrecks here. There's a lot of buildings here. But that doesn't mean what they're saying is the fact. That is their best guesswork based on knowledge up until that we've established at this point. There's, there's no... They could be completely wrong in every single way. You know? There's nothing, absolutely nothing to say that this is a fact. Alexandria had a more global significance, connecting multiple continents. The discovery of exotic goods and the remains of diverse ships in Alexandria underscores its broader reach in the ancient trading world compared to Ostia, which though significant. Well, I thought this is about how clear and what they're finding now. The Roman state. Why is he always going about Alexandria? So he's constantly going on about Alexandria and other places, but this place was maybe about Heraclean. Well, if you're, if you're doing a video on Heraclean, do a video on Heraclean. Tell us about the facts that have been discovered about Heraclean, not about Alexandria. Or any of these other places. We know about those. It's just like, really? Okay.